Uh, welcome you again on our webinar, Hybrid and Multi-Cloud, Living Boss on the Ground and in the Cloud. Uh, it's our third webinar from the Google Cloud Unfolded series of events organized together with Google Cloud. Today, uh, we'll explore the multi and hybrid cloud environments, their differences, advantages, Google Cloud solutions for these environments, and we'll also highlight real life cases. Let me introduce our speakers. Today, we'll have on stage our expert in Google Cloud Platform, Max Datsenko, Chief Technology Officer at CloudFresh. Hi, Max. And our second speaker is a customer engineer from Google Cloud, Ahmed Rabi. Hi, Ahmed. Thank you for joining us. I'd also like to tell you that we are having a quick pause running in the activity section, so you can see it in the bottom right corner. Please answer what's your role in a company and uh, what environment do you have an experience working in? It will help us and our speakers to know you better. Who we are at CloudFresh? CloudFresh is a global Google Cloud, Zendesk, Asana, GitLab, Microsoft, and Okta partner. We are trusted by more than 1,400 customers all over the world. We offer an entire life cycle of professional services to support our customers on the work with the solution, from consulting and planning to implementation, training of your teams and further support. Here you can see some of our customers who cooperate with us in different solutions and professional services to boost their operation within the cloud. And what we would like to offer you today it's a free infrastructure assessment session from our tech experts. So you are welcome to scan the QR code, fill out the quick form, and uh, use a chance to analyze and measure everything you need to transition to the cloud. And last but not least, we also would like to offer you two gift certificates to Google Merchandise Store for the two best questions to our speakers. The winners will be chosen by our speakers at the end of this session. And uh, that's it from my side. Thank you for your attention. Now I'd like to give a mic to our speakers. Max, please. Hey, everyone. Uh, like, uh, I want to thank you for joining us uh, this day. Uh, I hope that session will be uh, both interesting and beneficial for you. And uh, like, Speaking about the philosophy of for uh, complete cloud, soul cloud, and uh, hybrid and uh, multi cloud uh, approach is like pretty simple and obvious. Uh, well, uh, usually when you uh, you see the presentation about the Google Cloud, you 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 might think that uh, we uh, will try to convince you to uh, like make the full migration to the cloud. And uh, the benefits are pretty also obvious. Yeah, they are like maximum integrated uh, infrastructure, a lot of things which uh, work uh, together uh, pretty well. And you have the one stop shopping. Uh, but for sure, uh, there are also feelings which you might. Uh, experience is that uh you have all also already invested to uh, your on-prem or other cloud footprint uh and work with it uh and uh, your personnel is uh, like know how to do it how to work with it and uh you like already work with it and it's like a happy at least so uh um, transferring to google the whole thing to google cloud is like uh you might feel risky uh but what we really really mean uh and what actually google cloud gcp means uh by all this stuff is uh taking uh, the benefits and take the best all uh, from the both world, worlds uh actually for sure, you invested in your infrastructure on-prem, uh, and uh, we don't know to we, do, we don't want to stripe you of the, the of the money you invested. 
and from the efforts you invested. And uh, actually, what is uh, might be uh, uh, told about Google Cloud and like both uh, both approaches are pretty uh, like make sense, make a lot of sense uh, like both of them. But uh, for sure. Uh, you might benefit from the Google Cloud's uh, uh, possibilities, uh, opportunities, uh, not leaving, uh, like throwing out uh, what you've done before. And so uh, today I will like give you a couple of examples uh, of uh, that Google uh, is made intentionally uh, to be able to operate both infrastructures and uh, give you an opportunity to to do it uh, like transparently from the uh, from the one console or to uh, interact between uh, Google Clouds uh, services I will give uh, like a couple of unique things uh, but not all for sure uh like for you to be uh to keep calm and uh grab uh, what is best from the from the both worlds well uh surely uh you might experience uh, a lot of different thoughts which might stop you from the or uh like stop you from the migrating uh like i know a lot of them uh, i'm sure there's uh a lot others but there is some obvious uh how do they operate uh like between uh, environments uh what if you have some uh applications which uh are like legacy and uh, you don't know how to migrate it uh you have the problems uh, of like it, it might take time to uh, um, educate your personnel for moving but uh, like let me try to uh, give you a, a clue how it, how it would would, would be working uh, or might working might work uh, like first uh, question is uh, you would really want uh, Google Cloud environment to communicate to your on-prem or other cloud um, uh, environment. And uh, for sure there are uh, different options like dedicated interconnect or partner interconnect with a pretty high speed uh with uh very high slas so uh these are uh like not everything you might use for sure the uh, vpn which is which stands for virtual private network which you may organize with uh, devices or software you already have for uh, Google Cloud environments, speak easily and freely with uh, with your on-prem data center, with your corporate network, with uh, other clouds, uh, and for sure, it all also uh, high availability. It uh, provides you the um, the HA connection, so uh, you might feel uh, pretty sure that uh, it will work it would work work fast and uh it will uh overtake one line if one line fails uh so the next thing is infrastructure uh well uh like uh, at the moment like 95 percent of the corporate market is uh vmware uh, you run the virtual machines uh there um like gives you uh a give a, a great savings uh comparing to physical machines and everybody does that and google has the uh, vmware engine 
which is the most integrated uh, VMware service in the clouds possible, much more integrated than in uh, Azure or uh, AWS for sure. And uh, it's uh, high availability, it's completely integrated uh, with uh, all Google Cloud services, network, AI, ML, and all others, databases. Uh, and uh, that gives you uh, an opportunity to like, make the easiest lift and shift move uh, ever possible. Uh, and it gives you uh, a possibility to uh, operate, to migrate it smoothly to the cloud if you want, but also to operate uh, it both on on-prem and in Google Cloud, uh, having the uh, main data center on-prem or uh, in the cloud and the high availability data center like on the other side. Uh, Google Cloud uh, VMware Engine has all necessary licenses to do this. Uh, so you uh, like do not have to worry about uh, any technological things. Uh, you just have it. Uh, but well, for sure, the uh, uh, vir just virtual machines was the revolutionary technology like 20 years ago. But at the moment, it's like kind of obsolete. Uh, it saved you a lot of resources uh, 20 years ago or 15 years ago. Uh, but at the moment, uh, it's like uh, wastes resources comparing to the uh, technology which is called Kubernetes, which you uh, probably might uh, have heard of. And uh, Google has the, uh, like, you may know that uh, Kubernetes technology uh, in general is Google's uh, technology. Google invented it uh, and then uh, gave uh, out as a open source. So it's the enterprise standard at the moment, like uh, industry standard. But Google's, Google uh, made a step further. Uh, it, doesn't only uh, orchestrate the uh, containers, uh, which does like a lot of instruments, but this thing uh, gives you an opportunity to manage the uh, Kubernetes cluster whenever they are on-prem, in AWS, in Google Cloud, in Azure, like whenever they are. Uh, any cluster which is made by uh, any instrument which uh, utilizes the um, vanilla Kubernetes. Uh, and so you uh, manage from the pain of loss the uh, clusters uh, whenever they are. Uh, and in uh, any perspective, you, you might want like uh, creation of clusters, uh, deletion of clusters, policy management, service management, anything. Just anything, and uh, that's something uh, you may have only from Google, but like uh, at the same time, you may operate your clusters at any environment you may want. Next uh, important thing uh, is uh, backup and disaster recovery. And Google has the Cloud Backup and Disaster Recovery Service, uh, which is uh, incremental forever, uh, which gives you an opportunity to make the backups like every 15 minutes, uh, and you may store them forever. Uh, and uh, you don't uh, put, put the uh, heavy load uh, for backups on your infrastructure uh the very small uh, recovery time objective so you may recover the infrastructure of any size literally any size like you may have the um like 200 uh, terabytes databases uh hundreds of millions of files uh it will be uh, available for you like in five eight minutes uh, you pay only for the uh, space you really consume. You shouldn't pre-order 
uh, any any licenses, uh, and uh, it is as cheap as three cents per gigabyte per month uh, for the standard data and uh, cents per gigabyte per month for the uh, databases like uh, MySQL or Microsoft SQL, and twenty four cents per month per gigabyte uh, for the databases like Oracle. Uh, and it's uh, the single point of service uh, which you make backups, uh, recoveries, and disaster recovery. So it, it gives you an opportunity for the same price uh, to recover your data in other region in the cloud or uh, like database uh, if you need it for testing or something. Uh, for quality assurance, uh, it may uh, you may. Uh, like bring up the database in seconds from any state from those 15 minutes uh virtual 15 minutes uh state and it works both with your google cloud environment and also with your on-premises vmware and even with a uh, bare metal service uh, servers if we speak about oracle it's usually on the bare metal uh and with all the uh, benefits the thing and things that i uh told you before like you have it on google cloud and on prem uh next thing uh it's like we spoke about the infrastructure and the next thing is services and i will give you like a couple of examples on data analytics and bigquery is the unique products a product from the google it is like data warehouse product but it is much more than the uh, data warehouse it is also the data lake and even more it has the um, machine learning uh, uh, possibilities embedded uh, and uh, it may have or it may uh, cover uh, the uh, any uh, data you have uh, sitting on the for sure in the google cloud but also on prem on azure on aws and uh even in the sas applications so uh we actually have a lot of customers which uh like sitting on the aws or azure but still uh, using the uh, bigquery because uh, there is nothing even uh, close to uh, uh, to this product uh, in the industry at the moment. Well, and the uh, last uh, example from uh, from me uh, this this time is Looker. Looker is the BI, also very unique product, uh, which is designed, which by design uh, may uh, make live in the multi and hybrid cloud environment uh it is uh actually uh gives you an opportunity it, it may sit uh, on top of any sql speaking uh database whenever it lives uh in google cloud for sure in uh azure and aws in on-prem uh with any flavor you might imagine uh and then uh and actually uh not just it sits directly on top of the database so you uh, don't have to have uh, uh etl instruments it does the etl itself uh it extract transform and load uh which gives you an opportunity to um, to have the data analytics in a uh, nearly real-time mode uh but it also uh made you know, with a hybrid and multi-cloud in mind so uh that's something uh you may uh, you may use not even migrating the data any data to google cloud well, that's uh, uh, all I wanted to say uh, today in this session. And uh, Ahmed, uh, a customer engineer from Google Cloud, which uh, I thank you for joining us uh, today. And stage is all yours. Yeah, thanks, Maxim. And uh, 
uh, nice to meet you all. So as Maxim said, I'm Ahmed, I'm uh, part of the custom engineering team in Google Cloud. And I'll be talking about like in general using Google Cloud for um, hybrid and multi-cloud deployments. Perfect. So I'm going to talk about like right now um, the code migrations and the uh, IT modernization of your environment. So in general, like this graph basically, uh, like you have here on the I axis, the on-prem and public, and on the X axis, the classic operations and cloud native operations. So if you're on-prem and like you uh, have your uh, application as cloud native, meaning that it's portable, like for example, if you have your application containers, that's <coughs> it's portable and increased productivity. And then like if you move your uh, applications to the cloud, um, you will um, then get benefit for uh, security and pay for use. And if it's both uh, like um, cloud native and you move it to the cloud, then you gain all uh, the benefits as you can see on the screen. So basically, where most are today are like uh, running um, their environments on premise or uh, part of the environments on premise. And then everyone wants to be basically is to have their applications like as cloud native operations and as well deployable in the cloud. Perfect. So with a uh, hybrid, like you can migrate the workloads, like for example, as Maxim said, with lift and shift. So basically you can go up in this uh, graph, moving to the cloud uh, by basically migrating, migrating your environment. You can do it as lift and shift, basically migrating your environment as it is. Or you can migrate as well and enhance or modernize basically, which is basically um, moving to the top right here corner. So basically modernizing your application to make it portable and deploying it into the cloud. So for example, why would I use like multi and hybrid cloud environments? There's multiple, multiple use cases. So you can use it for backup, disaster and recovery. Uh, for lift and shift, basically migrating environment as this, you want to re-architect some of your workloads or you want to basically rip and replace with basically like, like basically creating a new workload from scratch. And we're going to see some examples based on that. So let's say, first of all, like, for example, I have my uh, environment on premise or another cloud and I want to use Google Cloud as my disaster recovery or a backup environment. So I can do that. So basically here on the left, I have like the production site. And on the production site here, um, I'm doing the first one as I'm doing backup. So basically I'm backing up all my data, databases and data repositories and servers. I can move into object storage so that my backup or I can build up a disaster recovery. So I, basically it's a replica of my environment and I deploy it here on Google Cloud. So whenever anything happens to my production site, I have the disaster recovery site up and running. And this is uh, an example of also a, like an environment or like an architecture where I have my uh, disaster recovery site. So I have here on the left my devices, um, and then on, on the down like downside of the slide, I have my on-premise data center. I connect on the cloud via VPN or carrier interconnect, whichever like would work for you. And then basically I have replica of everything, of my database server, of my application and a web server as well. I might also use Google Cloud to lift and shift. So basically I have some of my environment in on-prem or another cloud. I want to lift and shift it basically to Google Cloud. And I can continue to use as well like my on-prem environment with some of the application shift to the cloud. So if I'm using lift and shift, basically it's gonna be it depends where you run your application. If I'm having like if I'm having it on a virtual machine or a Docker image. So what I can save save what I can do basically is basically I save my uh, uh, virtual machine image, which is binary is basic configuration. And all I, all I would do is basically deploy this image on the cloud. So I'm lifting and shifting the, the application. It's basically from one virtual machine to another. If I'm doing with, uh, if I'm dealing, sorry, with containers, so it's the same container, to me the image anyhow, and then you can go deploy it in a Kubernetes cluster or like any container optimized environment. So 
sorry, I skipped the slide. So this is basically like an, another explanation of that previous, uh, previous slide. If I'm having um, an, an image on a virtual machine, I basically want to lift and shift it on the cloud. So I have it here on the left hand side. I just upload it to storage, it's cloud storage. In this, in this, um, example. And then I create an image basically, and then I boot, I boot my instance from this image. What can I do also is that if, if I want to lift and shift my database, I can do that. So I can have like my main application on prem, but my database on the cloud. So I have my database server here. This is here connected by uh, cloud VPN, but like, as we said, like you can connect by interconnect if this is more applicable for you. And then you replicate the data here for your, your database server. And here I have my application server as well. And my application server here is on the cloud, but like, it doesn't matter. I can have it on the, um, on the on-prem, it's basically a hybrid uh, approach. But like the idea of the slide here is I can have, I, I can basically migrate my database. So I do that as a replication to my database and then I make my database in the new cloud platform as a primary database. So that's another approach. What if I wanna re-architect some of my uh, workloads and move them to the cloud? Some of workloads can be a front end, back end and move into the cloud and have a hybrid environment as well. So let's say, for example, I want to have my database server on the cloud, but I want to re-architect my front end. So I want to host my front end, all my front end. Uh, sorry, I want to have my database server on premise, and I want my front end on the cloud. So I can do that. I have here on the slide, I have my on-prem data server, uh, a database server, it's on-prem. And all of my front end is on the cloud. So I have here like my load balancer, I have my web servers on the cloud, and then on the back end, it's connected to on-prem. The uh, VPN. Another thing is, let's say, for example, for compliance reasons, because uh, um, this happens like for compliance reason or like whichever reason, uh, you need to have your on-prem uh, infrastructure or your production system. You need to have it on-prem, and you cannot move it to the cloud, um, licensing or like compliance or whichever reason. But at the same time, you will want to have some test and development environment that you don't want to maintain and invest a lot to it in the cloud. Uh, sorry, in on-prem. So you can do that. So for example, on this slide, I have my production system on-prem and I'm moving all my test and development in the cloud. And it's connected here. So I have my database server. I connected the VPN to my environment in the cloud to transfer the data. And then I have my uh, my test system, all their like my test instances, my Q and A for doing quality assurance, and that side you have here the development team and the QA team can access that. Of course, this is gonna be like for your development and QA teams, not for the users. The users will access the production side. Uh, this is another, like, this is the same slide, but like here I'm having a test database as well. If I want to have a database as well, that's be integrated in my test environment that I want to do some uh, testing queries on. So I have, and I can do it via Cloud SQL, which is our database offering. The last thing here, if I want to rip and replace, rip and replace, basically I move an entire workload to a new architecture or I basically like create a new workload uh, from scratch uh, for 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 my application. Let's say, for example, my application does X, and that's fine. I want to basically, I want an application to do, do X as well, but I want to like replace it with a whole new approach, a whole new technology, or something like that, or a new deployment environment. I can do that, of course, on the cloud. Perfect. So we discussed basically some of the approaches that you can use to deploy in multi and hybrid cloud environment and why would you use them. And of course, like different use cases, there's lift and shift, uh, just a recovery, rip and replace, or you want to modernize, or you want to like basically have half of your environment here on prem or another cloud and the other half is on Google Cloud. So why would you choose Google Cloud? We have like best in class products, we have a suite of services that basically are tailored there uh, like the use case and as well we have services from fully managed services to infrastructure where you can basically build everything from scratch and also i'd say most of our services or like 
all of our services like we basically in google um when we like develop the services and all we make sure that there is no vendor lock-in so when you use any of our services we avoid vendor lock-in basically that you need to be locked in google cloud and most of our products as well are open source ready so they are built in open source uh, technologies such as like uh, kubernetes for example it's based on kubernetes which is an open source and also our services the container optimized services are also micro uh, container ready so ready for deployment container you don't need a specific configurations or a specific deployments to deploy your containers in google cloud as long as you're familiar with the technology you can deploy it directly to google cloud Perfect. Now I'm going to talk about like some of the services that you can use for like your hybrid uh, cloud and multi-cloud environment. So let's say, just, so let's say for example, I have a big environment and it's modernized meaning like, or like it's, it's based on cloud native operation meaning like I have it running on containers. Okay. So I have my applications uh, and I, they, they are running on containers and I have different clusters. And these clusters um, run on-prem. Some of them is on other uh, cloud provider. And some of them, for example, is in Google. So these are my applications, OK? And in order for me to manage these clusters and manage this application and have them talk to each other in different environments, I need to go configure each application in a specific way or each cluster in a specific way and deploy the, my deployments in that cluster and like configure them to be able to talk to each other. So what would be like an a general approach for that or solution for that if I have basically a single control plane where I can manage all these clusters, I can manage all their configurations, the security, the deployments and all of that and the dependencies. And that's what Anthos does. So basically, if I have here like on this slide, for example, I have here from hundreds, thousands of clusters. And I have clusters in Google Cloud, other cloud on-prem, specific regions for Gene Edge, whichever, like it, it works there. And then Ansos here provides a single plane. It's a software as a service solution, single plane for application management, for end-to-end -end observability, infrastructure automation, compliance, and governance. So you can basically have a monitoring solution for all of these clusters in different uh, in different environments. And as well, you can manage your applications for their manage your configurations from there accordingly using Ansos. And as well, um, like as it says in the slide here, like by 2025, 85 of our organization will run containers in production. Basically because containers are like, it's the new approach to deploy your application. And basically because it's portable as well, deployable anywhere as long as it's container optimized so a lot of the customers or a lot of the companies are moving to that approach if they didn't already and this slide as well explains from a high level as well what Anthos does so you have Anthos and you have here your clusters running in whichever environment you have your multiple environments whether it's another cloud provider or bare metal and from Anthos you can do uh, these configurations here. So you can do cluster management, you can do configuration, service management, operation security, and all of that. And it can be run in everywhere. So actually, like the next slide, yeah. So when with Anthos as well, you can, you can as well uh, gain operations efficiency. So basically, if I have my clusters running everywhere, I want monitoring for them, and I want to build dashboard for them and I want as well collect logs for them with Ansos you can do that so you can do that all over the whole of your clusters level you can do that based on the performance or application metrics and as well you can do error reporting based on that so as a summary what would um, Anthos be benefit uh, in terms of like um, your environments, if I'm running multi-cloud multi environments, specifically um, container environments. So basically, I can manage my applications anywhere. I can, of course, deliver software faster because like, I can create deployments based on that. There isn't a specific, as, I, as we said, like lock-in. There isn't specific lock-in that you, uh, when you use Ansys, you 
you, like you, it's, it's, it's built basically on open APIs. You can automate security. You can bring analytics and AI servers closest to your data. So if I'm like building dashboard or logging or reporting based on my whole clusters, I can then do analytics within that. And of course, reduce the total cost of ownership because without it, I would need to manage each cluster on its own. Perfect. And now I'm going to go to like a couple of uh, cases where like the multi and hybrid cloud environment, um, like the customers benefit from uh, Google's approach to hybrid and multi cloud environment. So the first one is Moderna, which is a big pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company. So uh, Moderna basically uh, they uses uh, they use Looker, and uh, Looker is like um, our platform for like dashboarding, building analytics uh, based on a, it can be connected to databases and it can be like you can query to build dashboards, analytics, metrics based on that. And what Moderna does uh, using their um, real-time uh, ETL operations, extracted from world operations into Amazon Redshift, which is their database in Amazon, and they're using uh, lookers to build models, data exploration, and self-services. And you can see here, they're saying that lookers fits well with our uh, multi-cloud uh, philosophy because they can show their preferred database. So it's basically, as we said, like, uh, which we avoid vendor lock in so you can use whichever database and connect it to Looker uh, accordingly. The other one here is Oracle Cloud and GCP. So we have a white paper uh, published as well. Um, some of the customers use Oracle Cloud and they want to uh, use GCP along with it. So we have a white paper published as well. It's uh, like um, a public white paper, verified one from Google on how to connect Oracle Cloud to uh, Google Cloud and make the best like out of uh, both worlds and best practices along with that. Uh, yes, that's it from my end. Uh, thank you all and I hope uh, this was useful and enjoyed it. Thank you, Ahmed. Max, can you please share with me the co-presenter rights one one time? Again, um, thank you. So uh, thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Max, for sharing your expertise. Uh, uh, now we're exceeding with the Q&A session. So please, if you have some questions to our speakers, you're welcome to write them in the chat. Okay, so we have one question from Eugenia. Uh, what management or, and orchestration tools are commonly used to streamline the operation of multi-cloud and hybrid cloud? Yeah, I can address that. So in general, it depends on what do you want to manage and orchestrate. So if it's something that, um, as I said, like based on container or you're having multiple Kubernetes cluster, it's going to be ants this like what's recommended from gcp's perspective but like in general again it depends on you what you want to orchestrate and what you want to deploy so Anthos, for example is application management if you have like data uh, exploration you can as we said like for example have have looker because looker can be connected to like external databases as well so the, the question would be like, it depends on what you want to manage and what you want to orchestrate. Based on that, you can see which service can be fit, whether it's application orchestration or data or so on. Thank you, Ahmed. I hope you answered uh, uh, the question. Next question from Mateusz. Uh, what are the potential challenges or risks associated with managing multiple cloud providers in a multi-cloud setup? Please, um, So uh, that as well, I would say, would depend on the setup and the uh, provider itself. So one of the challenges would be the vendor lock-in, which is like, as I said, like in Google Cloud, we avoid that. Um, as well, the application. So for example, it doesn't have to be necessarily on the cloud provider. I can be, for example, running on a specific cloud provider and, and then um, my application that I, I'm running has a specific license that it needs to be deployed X and Y and Z. 
it depends on the cloud provider and the application. But like in the modern world, most of the cloud providers um, have like their um, APIs like open source that can be connected uh, like to other cloud providers. The other thing is the application itself. The application itself, like if there is a specific licensing in the application, a specific compliance requirement in the application to do X and Y and Z. That would be the main, specifically if you are going from on-prem, if you're going from a cloud to another cloud, it should be easier because like a lot of the cloud providers open source it to connect to each other. If you're going from on-prem to a cloud, that's when I think there will be more requirements and compliance. It depends, of course, on the application that it is. Thank you. Mateusz, I hope you have answered. If no, you can ask one more time something in the chat. Uh, the next question, Fazli wants to know about security and subscription management. Okay. Um, I'll just ask for clarification on that security subscription management to monitor which, what, like, so for example, if you're talking about Google, uh, if you're talking about Google Cloud security management, subscription management, we have a specific service with like, we have a free version of it and a paid version of it where you can gain an overview of security of your environment, Google Cloud, um, overview as well of your configurations, recommendations. Like for example, if I have a public IP that should be private, if I have a specific firewall that I'm deploying it and it's not being used, stuff like that. We have a specific service that does that and scan vulnerabilities as well. It's called Security Command Center. That's like if you want to monitor like from GCP's perspective, your cloud environment. If that's your question, if not, like, please, can you elaborate on the chat and I'll get back to it. Thanks. Uh, well, while we're waiting, I can proceed with another question from your side. Uh, can you compare expenses for on-prem infrastructure and cloud infrastructure of the same size? Some um, example, maybe. So, yes, you can, but like, I can I can share from the cloud side, not from the, of course, on prem side. So from the cloud side, we have a pricing calculator. So pricing calculator basically is um, I'm gonna send it over actually to you. Uh, so pricing calculator is basically a platform. Okay, uh, it's not a platform; it's a web page where you can enter your expected configuration, and it will give you the expected uh, monthly price. So let's say, for example, I'm purchasing a specific machine, a specific machine family, and I'm using X CPU and Y RAM, and it's running for this amount of hours per month. I can go to the calculator, say that, okay, and based on that, it will give me the estimated monthly uh, monthly price. So based on what you know about your basically exactly sizing, the cloud infrastructure the size, based on what you know about like your infrastructure size itself, you can go put it in the calculator. That's from the cloud perspective to basically estimate round about how much you're going to pay per month. And in the calculator, you can do it per each service because, of course, it depends on what service you're going to use. If we're talking about like something from on-prem, uh, so basically you are talking about virtual machines, so it's going to be compute engine. Um, and for on-prem infrastructure expenses, it's not something that's like, touchable from our side because there's a lot of factors in it. So you're paying, you're not paying only for your infrastructure, you're paying for the security, you're paying for the maintenance of this infrastructure and the managing of the infrastructure and all of that. So these are also like, it's a variable cost that it, it's itself. It's not like a fixed and I'm paying for the service, you're paying for security, maintenance, all of that. So all of that, we we don't know like from the GDP side, from the GDP side, we can tell you like, okay, you're gonna use this and you can use the pricing to estimate from on-prem, you have the pricing of the servers that you uh, what, what what you pay, and you have as well like the variable cost about the management, the security, and all of that. So you can take that and compare it to the cloud. The cloud in that bit would be like cheaper, of course, and that's like one of the benefits of one of the benefits of the cloud because you only pay for what you use. Um, yeah. uh, actually, we uh, our first uh, Google Cloud Unfolded event uh, was about the uh, TCO structure of the cloud and uh, on-prem, and like we spent uh, the whole hour uh, for the session. The but to be short uh, is that uh, users uh, very often take just a piece of hardware. Uh, on-prem uh, divided into 60 parts like 
because the average uh, time of usage of the server is uh, like uh, five years. Uh, and then try to compare it to the uh, compute engine instance with the same parameters, which is not right because in the compute engine instance, you just have all the things and uh, you on prem uh, left to use it, you have to, to buy the VMware, which is uh, already mentioned today, uh, which doubles the price and uh, the uh, service contract, which triples the price and uh, uh, uninterruptible uh, power and cooling and uh, space, uh, rec space, and uh, actually the server, uh, server rooms and the security software and uh, high availability software. Uh, and power bills uh, each month, uh, and uh, actually power bills for the cooling itself uh, is uh, the same as for the equipment. Uh, and uh, all this stuff uh, is the, like makes you your price for the using uh, in the five years perspective uh, like uh, tenfold uh, of the price of the server hardware itself. Uh, which you have embedded uh, in the uh, Google Cloud infrastructure, uh, which which means you already it's included in the price and it's already implemented in uh, fully managed by uh, Google, uh, which means you don't have to hire the people uh, and to retain them and to pay them and to pay all the overheads. So. Uh, like it's hard to calculate every uh, every case because different organizations, different countries, different prices. Uh, but like uh, uh, standardly, uh, your server, which you try to compare uh, to Google Cloud's uh, Compute Engine uh, instance, is like at least tenfold uh, to the price you like seeing, uh, looking at the price of the server. Thanks, Max. Uh, I saw that Yaroslav <coughs> wrote thank you, so uh, I'm sure we covered the question. For some of you, uh, Yaroslav, for you as well, if you missed our first uh, session about general advantages of uh, cloud for business, how to calculate uh, total cost of ownership and uh, Everything else about it, you can just write an email to highcloudfresh.com and we'll share with you the recording of the of our first session. Next question is from Karina. What factors should organizations consider when choosing cloud providers for the multi and hybrid cloud deployments? Um I, I would say in that bit, like first of all, like it I'll start with case, okay, like what I want to achieve from this setup, like as, as we like spoke in the first, like if I want to lift and shift, if I want to deploy something new and all of that, because like if I want to, if I have an application, I want to move it to the cloud. So I need to, ch to check first from the application perspective, what cannot be moved, what can be moved and all of that. And if there's a, a, a strict requirements about this application. And if I actually want to move it as it is, or if I want to modernize or change it, like for example, containerize and all of that. I would start like with that. First of all, what I want to achieve. And then the cloud providers that are available can first, like of course the pricing, because the pricing like it's money is an important topic or we're never talking. So the pricing as well. So, okay, like I want to, after I identify my use case, I want to deploy X and Y and Z in these clouds. So then I can check the pricing of this clouds provider to check, uh, like how much an estimate it's not going to be 100 percent exactly by, but around about how much you're going to pay and as well how i'm going to connect to these uh like uh, providers and what can be transferred to these providers and also the services that are available uh, like of, uh, like if you go with something that's managed for you and like something that's um, the more managed you go basically uh, in a cloud provider the less you're gonna pay in general um basically like 
because you're offloading from yourself the, the management fees and, and all of that. So these are all factors that to be taken into consideration, basically when uh, deploying from hybrid and multi-cloud. I will start with the use case, what I want to achieve, and based on that, explore what's available in terms of like the services and the pricing, crossing referencing uh, with it, and which cloud provider actually uh, like uh, provides, and that's it. And then you can basically start afterwards, um, usually start testing on the cloud. You're not gonna like move directly, like hey, I'm gonna move directly, you start basically testing on this cloud, uh, creating like um, basically like a landing environment there, all of that and testing with this cloud. And based on that, you can start then moving your application to the cloud or deploying the hybrid cloud environment. Um, that's for that question. Uh, there is another Thank question you. about, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted. I saw that uh, Fazli wrote two questions that maybe uh, uh, mixed, like what is the uh, yearly uh, service level agreement? And uh, if I move apps from on-prem to cloud, what kind of support you provide? Free or uh, not so free? For the SLA itself, um, this is like a, a, um, a link that has each, because each service has its own SLA. So this link basically have the SLAs of all of the services. So you can click on the service and check its, its, its SLA. Uh, that's for the SLA. In general, if I move apps from on-prem to cloud, what kind of support to provide? Honestly, I'm not like the, the person for like the exact support. Like we general, um, there is, I think, a form uh, where you can basically contact our sales team. And basically the sales team takes, takes it from there they can engage us and they can tell you at that point like okay what can be provided for you as in terms of support we have some support to be provided as well we have um, like for example we have uh, um, cloud fresh as well can be they be engaged like in um, in like in migrations and all of that but like my point is is um, it depends basically it's not up to me it's basically you can tag the sales team and the sales team basically take it from there they are the one that's responsible for like um the commercial side what kinds of support uh, to be done and all of that if that makes sense uh that's for that question yep and from the uh, cloud per side uh, side uh, um, for sure that depends on the level of support uh that may be uh, some some part of it may be free some part of it may be paid uh anyway i would uh like um consider uh worth it to to, to, to uh buy the qa uh, qr code which which was on the, the start of the presentation which uh which is uh, a link to the uh to the uh, form on which you may fill and have the free infrastructure assessment session and then we'll understand which support will uh we may provide to you for free uh as a support and actually we provide the first line uh support uh for any questions uh for the cloud you use uh, for free uh and so uh, like maybe some some things uh some complex things uh which may be the professional service and it's paid but like it depends thank you max for clarification thank you Ahmed, for your answers i think uh, if there is no questions for now we can choose two best question according to your opinion from from a lot of them and uh, so please Ahmed Max uh, what questions you like the most okay <laughs> <laughs> they are all good <laughs> uh, yeah the, the potential challenges and risks with managing multiple cloud providers okay okay so Mateusz uh, will write to you and you'll get the uh, gift certificate to google merchandise store and Max well 
And from my side, I would choose the uh, Fazil Mamedov with all of all, all his questions, uh, which uh, together definitely uh, makes the best one. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Fazil, uh, thank for your questions. Yes, thank you. Uh, you'll get the certificate on your email and uh, uh, and what uh, Max already mentioned about our special offer one more time so I will not stop here you're welcome to scan the QR code fill out the quick form you'll get the free infrastructure assessment session from our experts so please do it if you want and I'd like to thank you all for joining special thanks to our speakers for sharing all those insights. And uh, I think, oh, Sergey Evans, do you have some questions? If no, thank you all. Have a nice day ahead. See you at our further events with Google Cloud. Thank you, bye-bye. Thanks everyone, bye-bye, have a nice day.